Using SharePoint Designer 2010, it is very easy to create SharePoint 2010 components. Many of the things you can do using the browser are available to be done using SharePoint Designer 2010. The difference is that it's faster and easier and more effective when you use SharePoint Designer to create those components. I'll show you how easy it is to create the sites, lists, and pages that your users would want, among other things, in SharePoint Designer. So let's get started. All right, I'm gonna to go to my uh, file menu for this thing and show you that all the different components that you can create from this backstage in SharePoint Designer. I'll get back to uh, my file and I'm gonna to go to the subsites section in my site and I'll click on new to make a new subsite underneath this site. And I'll choose a team site template. The name for this site is gonna be large order sales. Simply type that in, make sure it's team site template. I'll click on OK to make it. When it's done, it automatically opens it up in a different session of SharePoint Designer. So I can verify with the URL above that it is SharePoint, uh, the new site that SharePoint Designer just created. I'll go to the list and libraries section here, show you all the different lists and libraries that come uh, with out of the box team site template. One thing that I want to do now is to make a new list. So I'll go to the ribbon up above, click on SharePoint list, and one list that's not there is contacts. And let's say if I need contacts in my site. So I'll click on that. It gives me a new window to tell me, of course, what name, instance name of this list that you want. And I'll call it depart departmental contacts so, or department contacts. All right, so it made a list for me just that easy. I'll go into the list. Here's my summary page for that list. Shows me the views and the forms and everything else for that list. Also shows me the URL, web address for that list. I'll click on that and it's gonna automatically navigate me to that. Bunch of different uh, things that I have here in this list. One, uh, there's a column called company name. And uh, since it's a department list, I know that the company is going to be the same, of course, for all the different contacts, so I don't really need the company, uh, the field right now, the company metadata. So I'll go back to SharePoint Designer. And there's a thing for editing list columns, editing list schema, basically. I'll click on that and I'll go to the company column. And I can go simply delete it. Very easy. Save it, of course. I'll refresh this page and company is gone, just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is go to a site pages library and the site pages library that comes with all the different, with all the new team sites instance now. Uh, this is a place where you can create new pages for your site. The home page is the, of course the home page of your site and what I'm going to do is just make a new web part page. And it's going to be teamresources.aspx, just the name of this page. I'll go into it, click on it. There's a edit file link. If I clicked on edit file link, it would let me edit the page. Also, there's an edit file menu with the normal mode and advanced mode. Now my recommendation is that you use normal mode as much as possible because in normal mode, it doesn't let you really customize the page, meaning it doesn't let you, or I should say, it doesn't let you uh, break the page. Uh, in advanced mode, it's, it's possible that if you're not sure what you're doing, you could break the page. So if you don't have the privilege, of course, for advanced mode, you'll be, you'll be stuck with normal mode anyway, but if you did have advanced mode uh, authority, still think about it twice before going into it. I'll go into normal mode. And this is loading up my master page, which is my look and feel of the site. Here we go. This is my new page with two different zones. I'll click on the first one, and this is going to show me this is the header zone for this page. And then there's a body zone. And all the stuff on the side, the master page components basically are not editable right now, so I cannot break anything really. I'll go into the first, uh, the first area for the header and I'll click on the insert menu up above 
this gives me all different options of things that I can insert in this area. One of the things is data view. I'll click on that. And here are my department contacts. I'll click on that. So it's going to go ahead and put all my department contacts right here. Now, my of course, my department contacts list exists. And now I'm putting a new web part, and this is a XSLT list view web part. That's what this is, XSLT list view web part that I'm putting on this page, which is showing me the same contact information that I have on my list on this page. Now, of course, the difference is that once I put the contact list here, in, the, in this uh, web part, I can change the uh, the look and feel of this web part the way I want. So I'll save it first. This is of course the list of department contacts. I'll go ahead and add a new item. And for the new contact, I'll go ahead and just add my own name there. Remani is my last name, Asif is the first name, and I'll save that. Then I'll go to Site Pages, where my other page is located, Team Resources. I'll click on that. And this shows me, of course, my contact. Perfect. It is exactly the way the department contacts uh, list pages. I'll go back to SharePoint Designer right now and open up the sales uh, or the team site uh, homepage, the summary page here. Now, I've showed you all that I wanted to in terms of actually uh, creating stuff in this team site. So let's say if you were done with the team site, you didn't want it anymore, you didn't want to archive it, you just wanted to get rid of it completely. Very easy way, you click on the delete site button. Of course, you got to be careful doing that. And it's asking you, do you want to delete it? And if you click on yes, it's gone. This procedure does not put it into the recycle bin the site is actually gone, it's not recoverable until unless you go back to a, a backup of your database and grab it from there. So now I'll go back to the site and verify that if I click on team site, it's no longer there. And I'll go to the uh, parent site right now, which is sales. From there, I'll go to my view all site content and verify over there also that the site information is no longer present for the subsite. Here we go.